Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I want to share four books that are considered to be some of the best when it comes to learning about DevOps. And whether you're an absolute beginner or an experienced professional, there are some books that I think everyone must read. And these are some of them. I'll also provide a brief overview of each book so that you can decide which one you should start with. So here it goes. So the first book that I want to introduce is The Phoenix Project. You know, you must have heard about this. It's a novel about IT DevOps and helping your business win by uh, Gene Kim, Kevin Baer, and George Stafford. Um, the next book that I want to introduce is The Unicorn Project. It's a novel about developers, uh, digital disruption, and thriving in the age of data by Gene Kim, who is also one of the authors of The Phoenix Project. And the third book is The DevOps Handbook. How to create world-class agility, reliability, and security in technology organizations by Gene Kim, Jez Humble, Patrick Dubois, and John Willis. And the fourth book that I want to introduce is the Effective DevOps book, uh, Building a Culture of Collaboration, Automation, and Continual Improvement by Jennifer Davis and uh, Rinda Daniels. Now, I've picked only four of uh, my favorite books, and I'll now talk about why you should read these, and I also uh, release detailed reviews of these books in the upcoming video so don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you get notified uh, when they're out and if you have read any of these books already uh, please leave your comments below and let me know what your thoughts are about them now the first book the phoenix project is a must read for anyone in it it doesn't matter if you consider yourself in devops or not this is for everyone developers, operations people, anyone from management, security professionals, executives overseeing technology like CIO, CTO. And it's an easy read because it's in a story format. The story follows Bill, a character uh, who works in IT and is tasked with turning around the failing IT organization of a company called Parts Unlimited. Now, the book starts with major changes happening at the company with the CEO stepping down, stock prices dropping, and there's been layoffs and Bill is promoted as a VP and is tasked to lead an important project that is supposed to restore profitability and turn the company around. And the project is codenamed the Phoenix Project. Now, Bill quickly realizes that the company's IT systems are a mess and that there are many roadblocks in his way. And as Bill struggles to get the project off the ground, he's introduced to a mentor named Eric, who meets with Bill periodically and guides him. Now, Eric introduces Bill to a manufacturing factory and explains to him how it functions and Bill can't figure out what a manufacturing factory has to do with IT operations. And Eric explains that it has everything to do with it. Eric teaches Bill the principles of flow, the principles of feedback, and the principles of continuous learning and experimentation. And Bill begins to implement these principles and practices and eventually he is able to turn the project around and deliver it on time. Now, throughout the book, the authors use the story of Bill and the Phoenix Project to illustrate the challenges and opportunities that organizations face when it comes to IT and business alignment. And they offer practical advice for improving communication, collaboration, and delivery in any organization. So I highly recommend anyone in IT to absolutely read this book at least once. And if you use Audible, then you can finish hearing this book, I think, in, in about 14 hours. If you listen straight or uh, if you listen to it when you are traveling to work a couple of hours or when you are, when you take a walk you could probably finish it in a week or two but this is definitely worth it now the next book is the unicorn project now unicorn project is a follow-up to the phoenix project also written by gene kim who is one of the authors of the phoenix project and it tells the story of maxine an engineer who works uh, at parts unlimited which is facing a number of challenges and struggles uh, with its it systems and like the Phoenix Project, the Unicorn Project explores the principles of the three ways and the five ideals, and it shows how these concepts can be applied in the real world to improve flow, uh, continuous feedback, and continuous learning. Now, the book also introduces the Unicorn Project, which is a project that uh, has the potential to transform the organization and bring about significant change. And as Maxine works on the Unicorn Project, she faces a number of challenges and roadblocks. Um, the book talks about the importance of um, having a centralized build system 
uh, tests and deployment systems and how it's important for developers and operations people to collaborate better. So overall, the Unicorn Project is a thought-provoking book uh, for anyone looking to drive change in their organization and it offers valuable insights and advice for anyone looking to lead a successful project. So that's something I highly recommend. Now, after reading these two books, if you think you're inspired and you have a high level overview of the change that you need to bring in your organization and you want to know how to do it, then the next book is for you. Now, the next one, the DevOps Handbook, how to create world-class agility, reliability and security in technology organizations. This is again another must read for anyone interested in DevOps. This is written by Gene Kim, who is the author of the two previous books, Just Humble, You Should Know By Now, and Patrick Dubois and John Willis. And this book provides a comprehensive overview of all things DevOps and how it can help organizations become uh, more successful. Now, unlike the previous books, this is not in a story format. However, this book is full of case studies from various organizations that the authors have worked with and so provides a first person view into a lot of insights from different projects and different challenges and various companies. So this is more of a practical book uh, and the book is divided into different parts. The first part covers the three ways of flow, feedback and continuous learning. And um, this is something that was discussed in the previous two books. Uh, in a story format but now you see it in a practical format the second part discusses where to start and how value streams work which one to start with and how to design organization and architecture and how to get great outcomes uh, by integrating op operations again a detailed study of this book is coming up in the upcoming videos so uh, don't forget to subscribe uh, if you want to be notified now the last book on my list is the effective devops book and it's a book written by Jennifer Davis and uh, Rin Daniels that explores the principles and practices of DevOps and provides practical advice for implementing and scaling DevOps in any organization. Now, this is again uh, a practical guide. So I myself have not read it from start to finish in one go. I use the book more as a study material where I find myself picking different parts of the book at different times to learn about a specific area that I'm interested in. Also note that these books are not specifically about a particular technology or do not uh, tell you exactly what tools to use or how to architect a particular solution. These books teach you more about the people than the process and the cultural aspects of DevOps and how you can see technology as an enabler to these. So this book is divided into six parts. The first part uh, shares a big picture of DevOps and talks about what DevOps is, the different ideas, definitions, and busts some myths around DevOps, and talks about the differences between Agile and DevOps. And the second part is about collaboration. And this is one of the most important sections of the book and a section that I would highly recommend everyone to go through. This is a section that I find myself going back to from time to time. You know, when we work together as a team and as our organization grows, we run into issues with different people having different working styles about competition within teams uh, with each other and the different mindsets such as uh, you know, having a fixed mindset versus having growth mindset. And these are the things that you will be able to relate to in your daily work environment. And you find people that know a lot of things and hoard information assuming that that will help their job security. And this section talks about why it's important to share information within the teams and build a culture of uh, better collaboration. There are some really interesting case studies um, that I'll share again in one of the upcoming videos where I'm gonna uh, go through this book in much more detail. Now, uh, the other sections in the book talk about tools and this is not a deep dive into a particular tool, but more of a high level overview of what kind of tools solve what kind of problems. And if you have any questions, um, don't forget to leave your comments below. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel uh, for more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next one.